Hey, what's up guys, Bennett Profixer, and today I have the Galaxy S10e. This thing is truly an incredible device, and I don't mean in a compromised kind of way. The Galaxy S10e is the lowest end Galaxy S10 you can buy as it sits along the S10 and S10 Plus, but realistically this thing is just a slim down Galaxy S10. The S10e has the same processor as the S10, two of the three rear cameras from the S10, and even the same classic Galaxy build quality just like the S10. Let's check it out. Open up the box, you see all the extras like the manual, semi eject tool, and all that standard stuff. And it actually comes like wedged in the lid, which is kind of cool. So you don't actually have to pull it out. It's like, you know, sitting up there on the top. First thoughts on the phone are that it looks so good. A super cool feature that I think I like better than the notch is the hole punch. And one of the really cool things with the hole punch versus the notch is that since the hole punch actually has image going around the edges of it, your brain kind of fills in the gap, whereas just with the notch, it's just kind of taken out from the edge of the screen, which is kind of a cool thing that your brain does. Like when you're watching full screen videos or just using your phone in general, despite having the hole punch moved inward farther than the notch goes, it's actually less noticeable. And having a hole punch opens up a whole nother element of coolness for wallpapers. There's a lot of wallpapers that are made to kind of harness the hole punch, whereas with the notch, you really couldn't do that. Inside the hole punch, there's a 10 megapixel wide angle camera. It's not ultra wide, it's just regularly wide, which is 26 millimeters, which is the same focal length as the rear camera. The rear camera is a 12 megapixel wide angle lens. It's also accompanied by a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera, which gets for some really cool wide angle shots, which is really nice. The focal length on it is about 12 millimeters, I believe, which gets you about double the width, double the height. So it's a pretty cool feature to have. And we'll look more into the other features with the S10e, but let's tear it apart first. I've got my blue heating mat turned up to 70 degrees Celsius and the phone's been on there for just a little bit. Once it's hot, it'll retain the heat and make the adhesive soft and making it easier to pull apart. I'll make an entry point with a razor blade since it's thin and rather wide. This prevents any high pressure areas and allows you to fit the plastic playing card in easily. Work gently around the edges. Don't try and separate too deeply just yet. You'll work your way around a few times and continue to get deeper until you've been through all of the adhesive. Once the adhesive is loose, it'll open easily like a book, which is pretty satisfying. Looking all around the edges, the adhesive isn't folded, isn't torn, and it still looks pretty new, which is good because we're gonna put this thing right back on and not have to redo the adhesive. On the back of the device, you'll remove 15 screws. Here's the wireless charging coil. You can peel this up slightly on the bottom and then the top cover will come off super easily. On the back side, you'll see these contacts. These actually touch like little spring prongs that are on the motherboard itself. Go ahead and disconnect the battery. The bottom plastic cover comes off easily as well. Just lift it up gently and it'll come off. Here you can see the 3100 milliamp battery, which isn't the biggest one compared to other smartphones, but it sure isn't small and it actually has really good battery life. To get the board out, you'll take out two screws near the port at the bottom. Remove the front camera, unplug the screen, and take out the SIM card tray. The tray is pretty cool because it supports dual SIMs and it has an SD card as well. One last screw at the top needs to be removed before the motherboard will come out. And actually, before we pull the motherboard, I noticed that we need to remove the headphone jack, unplug the FPC, and insert a screwdriver as if you're plugging in a headphone. Twist up gently and this will lift the port out without prying with inside the housing preventing any kind of motherboard damage that could possibly happen. Now to get the board out. Pry very gently and it'll come out. The bottom of the port is held in by the port seal. It's pretty cool. This is what keeps water from getting the housing of the device. Looking inside the housing, you'll see the heat pipe which keeps the processor cool during use. There's this heat sink padding on the bottom side of the motherboard. This keeps the motherboard in full contact with the heat pipe. The USB-C charging port in the new Galaxies is soldered in. This is a pretty big change from the modular daughter board style flexes from the previous generations. I assume this is to keep the device more water resistant. However, this does make for a more difficult repair if the port would ever become damaged. Getting the board back in the housing is easy. Just place it in, don't pinch the flexes and you're good. The headphone jack just kind of slides in. Give it a good squeeze until you hear a click to make sure it's seated. Put the front cam in, and then to make sure the motherboard is held in well, I'm gonna put the SIM card reader in already. This helps to hold the board in while I work on it. I'm gonna power it up real quick and make sure that nothing's damaged before going any further. Looks like it's all good, so let's power it off. Put the bottom speaker cover in along with its accompanying screws. The top plastic cover that has the wireless charger on it is easy to install as well. Place it on gently and then just put in the rest of the screws. Each major step I power up and power back off the device to ensure that no mistakes were made. 
This only takes a second and saves a ton of time if you ever make any mistake at any point and you can easily track when that mistake was made. The final thing to do is install the back glass. Here I'm using some 3M Primer 94 to prepare the surface for the new back. This is an adhesion promoter and will activate the adhesive to ensure it holds tight. Now that we've seen the inside, let's talk about some of its specs. The last review I did was about the Nubia Red Magic 3 Gaming Smartphone, which if we remember, the processor in the Red Magic 3 Gaming Smartphone is the Snapdragon 855, which the S10 and S10 Plus and even this S10e uses. It's an incredibly popular processor and incredibly powerful as well. Even the OnePlus 7 uses it, which we do have a video coming out next week. So make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the notification button so you don't miss it on that one. Depending on the storage, you'll get varying RAM sizes. The 128 gigabyte storage comes with six gigs of RAM. If you get the S10e with the 256 gigabytes of internal storage, you get eight gigs of RAM, which is pretty impressive. Despite having a 3100 milliamp battery, you will get right about nine hours of battery life of actual usage. The cameras on this thing are amazing. Like I said before, it uses two of the three rear cameras that you would get on the S10. A really cool feature that I thought was extremely awesome that I've never actually experienced before was the wireless power share. It's where you can turn the device over after activating the wireless power share function. It'll actually charge through the back glass to another device. This is really cool. This isn't a high power charging option, but you can still charge other people's smartphones or even your own if you had a second. And as well, you could charge AirPods or some other type of wireless charging accessory, which makes it incredibly convenient. Something that at first glance seems like a bummer is the lack of the in-screen fingerprint reader. On the S10 and S10 Plus, it's kind of like the cool factor between it. You can just hold your hand in the middle of the screen and it'll read your fingerprint through the display itself. On this device, however, it'll actually read it through the power button. And this has to be one of the fastest fingerprint readers I've ever experienced. Like literally, you can just barely touch the thing and in a split second, it unlocks the device. Along with that, it has gesture control where you can turn on so it'll pull down your notifications as you slide down on the power button and slide up. Gaming on this device is pretty sweet. It plays PUBG on high with no limitations as it has the same processor as dedicated gaming smartphones with enough RAM to support it as well. They can also play Dragon Ball Legends, which I recently found, which turns out to be a pretty awesome game too. Overall, I really like the S10e. I think that it is the best value device that you can currently buy. Sure, it doesn't have the telephoto camera like the S10, but it does use the S10's wide and ultra wide camera. It may not have the biggest battery being that it's only 3100 milliamps, but at eight to 10 hours of battery life, it could still be considered an all day battery. And the build on this thing is the same as any other Samsung Galaxy flagship device. So all in all, it's an incredible device. I appreciate y'all watching. And if you like this video, go to hit the like button. If not, the other button seems to work okay too. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. In the meantime, come to my own channel, ProFixer. It's in the description below, along with all the tools and equipment that I use from Injured Gadgets for this video. See y'all later.